We've all been there, going from craving fried chicken to intensely regretting eating it right after. Can you believe that the founder of KFC felt quite the same? Yup, he actually ended up hating KFC and regretted his decision to sell it. In fact, he sued his own brainchild for over $100 million. What went so horribly wrong? Let's find out. The Man Behind the Image Harlan David Sanders is a well-known figure in all of America, but there's much more to his name than just his white hair and sharp suit. The famed fried chicken chain's creator wasn't one without a controversy. Some people didn't even know that the Colonel wasn't simply a beloved caricature of the KFC logo, but an actual real person. In addition to founding the business, Harlan David Sanders spent the last 20 years of his life serving as its spokesperson. His challenging background set him on a difficult path from the get-go. His father passed away when he was only six years old. Later in the seventh grade, he left school. He then worked hard, physically demanding jobs for most of his life, including as a fireman, a railroad laborer, and a blacksmith's apprentice. But he wasn't hindered by that and went on to earn a law degree, but after fighting with one of his clients, he was fired from his position as a lawyer. Now, you must know he was quite a hothead throughout his life and was known for his occasional outburst. You'll hear more about that later in the video. He began by selling his fried chicken at a petrol station's counter, before eventually establishing an adjacent restaurant as it gained popularity. He developed the secret recipe for KFC's renowned chicken when he was 50 years old. He didn't give his recipe to the Utah restaurant that had ultimately become the first official KFC franchise until he was 62 years old in 1952. Three years later, Sanders was forced to close his company since Interstate 75 had been constructed and there were no more customers where his restaurant was. With only $106 left in his pocket, he was pretty much broke. He tried to franchise his chicken by driving across the nation while sleeping in his car, and the gamble paid off. He had more than 600 locations by 1964 when he was 74 years old and it was more than he could manage. So he paid two businessmen $2 million for the company and received a $40,000 yearly payment for his ambassadorial duties. But at that point, things started to go south. What happened that made Colonel Sanders sue the business he spent blood, sweat, and tears building? Incredibly high standards. While he supported the restaurants by touring the nation, he maintained the same high standards he had when he was developing his products. Because the colonel's original recipe was supposedly too complex to carry out throughout the company's more than 5,000 outlets, KFC eventually modified the recipes for both his fried chicken and gravy. According to rumors, Sanders would visit store locations and throw a fit because he was so furious over the subpar quality of the food. According to KFC executives, the colonel would think that someone was a fantastic franchisee, serving perfect gravy while earning very little money for the business, in comparison to someone who was a franchisee earning a lot of money for a not-so-perfect gravy. The colonel believed that creative talent is more important than money, and you could argue that his mindset was right, but his recipe got too complicated and long for all these franchises to follow to a T. But it didn't end there. The Payback Plan Colonel Sanders' love for KFC quickly waned after the phenomenal success of his brainchild. After Hugh Blyne acquired the business in 1971, Sanders started calling KFC's gravy slop and its managers a bunch of alcohol hounds. Sanders planned to create a new, competitive restaurant called after his mistress-turned-wife, Claudia Sanders, because he was so upset with how his brand had suffered. Sanders sued the company for $122 million because he thought Hugh Blyne was purposefully obstructing his plans for a new restaurant. KFC vehemently opposed the project, claiming ownership of Sanders' name and even the word colonel in its legal arguments. Yup, they basically said, we own you, what you gonna do? When KFC learned of his plans to launch the eatery bearing the name Claudia Sanders, the colonel's lady, they attempted to prevent him from doing so by suing his new venture. Sanders played an Uno reverse card on them and sued with a $122 million claim for using his imagery. After an out-of-court settlement for $1 million, Sanders finally sold KFC. According to the contract, Sanders would get $1 million, in addition to the chance to teach Hugh Blyne executives how to cook. Sanders had to make a vow in exchange to stop publicly criticizing KFC in the future. 
By the way, the Claudia Sanders Dinner House is still operational in Shelbyville, Kentucky, where you can go to try the original recipe that he penned down for KFC. So even though Sanders made millions from selling KFC, he quickly came to regret the move after doing so. Sanders declared that the fried chicken he had at a franchise in New York City was the worst I've ever seen. Sanders referred to the gravy as nothing more than wallpaper paste since it was so bad. The legacy continues. The business Colonel Harlan Sanders founded made a startling finding on the 120th anniversary of his birth. Most people were unaware he was a real person. In response, the fast food restaurant started a PR campaign to spread the word about its adored founder. KFC requested sketches of the colonel from artists, and the winning entry received $1,100 to paint a new portrait of the colonel using paint that was infused with the colonel's signature 11 herbs and spices. Also, they once rewarded a guy who discovered that KFC's Twitter handle only follows 11 people, the 5 Spice Girls and 11 men named Herb, as a nod to the secret recipe. Sanders continued to be the brand's spokesperson even after the company was sold. Everywhere he went, he claimed that people knew him, and some even stopped him to voice their disapproval of KFC's food. What about that catchphrase? Well, it's no surprise now that Colonel Sanders couldn't have been the one to pen down KFC's catchphrase. What's the story behind it then? The fast food establishment is well known all over the world for its legendary fried chicken. There are franchise locations in 130 different countries, so it's safe to say that you're almost certainly never too far from a KFC, or its delicious but well-kept secret blend of herbs and spices. Nearly as widely recognized as the fast food restaurant chain's signature chicken and coleslaw is its ingrained advertising catchphrase, it's finger licking good. Dave Harmon, who established his Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant in Phoenix in the 1950s, is where it all began. In regional restaurant advertisements shot at a Phoenix TV station, Harmon would be seen devouring a plate of fried chicken. Following one of these advertisements, a viewer protested to the broadcaster, objecting to the depiction of Harmon eating and licking his fingers. To that, Harbo responded, well, it's finger licking good, and the rest is history. That had a catchy ring to it, so it moved up the corporate food chain and was soon being used to promote Kentucky Fried Chicken. It was quickly distributed across the country on innumerable red and white striped paper buckets. Over the years, KFC has occasionally used the catchphrase, well, except in 2020 during the coronavirus pandemic for obvious reasons. Best Kept Secret Now, people have tried guessing what the secret recipe of 11 herbs and spices is, but nobody ever came close. Well, almost. In the basement of a Kentucky house that was previously owned by Colonel Harlan Sanders, restaurant owners Tommy and Cherry Settle discovered a handwritten note. The pair believed they'd discovered the long sought after secret, the ingredients of Colonel Sanders' renowned chicken, while they were going through some old boxes in the basement of the house when they came across a dusty leather-bound diary. To find out if the recipe was real, they chose to get in touch with KFC. But to their surprise, attorneys and a lawsuit quickly followed after KFC was informed. Turns out it was a recipe for something else, but it sure did send KFC owners into a panic spiral. When the safety of the secret is jeopardized, KFC takes legal action and requires the few employees who do know the recipe to sign confidentiality agreements. But you now know that it's not Colonel's actual recipe. He passed away from leukemia at the age of 90, five years after the conflict between his restaurant and KFC was resolved. It's sad how the colonel lost control over his business and even his own reputation, relegating him to the status of a mere symbol in today's society. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.